you know, if you've got any amount of money in your wallet, and I've got a whopping $16 right here, you've also got a lot of birds, bald eagles to be exact. For instance, here on the front of the $10 bill, you've got a bald eagle that's part of the Federal Reserve seal. $5 bill has two eagles on the front. On the trusty $1 bill, you've got the bald eagle that's part of the Great Seal of the United States. I would bet that the bald eagle is the most common symbol on any American currency dating back to the very beginning of our country. All of our paper currency right now, for instance, has bald eagles on it. Same thing with quarters. You know, back before the 90s when these, the country introduced these new state quarters, um, the quarter had a big eagle all over the back of it. Our 50 cent piece has the great seal of the United States on the back, so on the reverse side of John F. Kennedy, you've got the bald eagle. And why not? The bald eagle is one of our country's most enduring symbols. Back in 1782, when our founding fathers created the great seal of the United States, they put the bald eagle right in the middle of it. But it's not our only national symbol. We've got Uncle Sam, the Statue of Liberty, uh, a flag, of course. But obviously there's something about the eagle that's different. You don't see the national tree, the oak tree, on the back of the $20 bill. You don't see our official flower, the rose, on the $1 bill. Um, you don't see Uncle Sam there next to Abraham Lincoln on the 5 No, there's obviously something different about the bald eagle. Our founding fathers didn't dream up the bald eagle out of thin air. Uh, back in Europe, where most of them came from, the eagle had a history of being a symbol for freedom and strength. And in the early days, the Founding Fathers liked to compare America to the Roman Republic, and the eagle was a primary symbol of the Roman Republic. Still, as our Founding Fathers were tinkering around with ideas for what to put on the Great Seal, they thought of a lot of other birds. Uh, they thought of other eagles, um, the dove, um, the rooster, believe it or not, and the phoenix, which is a bird, but I wouldn't go looking for it in your Sibley Guide. Uh, Benjamin Franklin even famously said after the fact that he kind of wished that America had adopted the turkey as the national bird. Um, I guess we're all kind of glad it didn't work out that way. Nonetheless, it was pretty certain that there was going to be a bird on the Great Seal. Well, there are lots of things on the Great Seal that didn't rise up to be major symbols for our country. I mean, there's the pyramid, the the Eye of Providence, the Rays of Light, the 13 Arrows, none of those became super popular, not nearly as big as the Bald Eagle. Why do you think that was? I mentioned earlier how back in the 1990s the federal government gave states the ability to design their own special quarters, and when California's turn came around, we had all sorts of things to choose from. California has no shortage of symbols. We have a state mineral, a state mammal, a state flower, a state insect. Um, we even have a state dirt and a state beverage. Um, we also have a state bird, which is the California quail. Now, obviously, you can see where I'm going with this. Um, California did put a bird on the back of the state quarter. However, we didn't use the state bird. We chose another bird, which is the California condor. Well, why would we do that? Could it be that birds mean something more to us than perhaps we ourselves even understand? Well, I'm not sure. But part of the answer is probably in your wallet. <laughs>